They slept soundly in a dry cave. Then, Bilbo heard a noise. In the darkness and confusion, no one saw Bilbo crack his head on a rock and fall into shadow. When he awoke, Bilbo was alone. Ah, oh, lost again! Oh right, I was in the middle of a let's play. <laughs> Aloha everybody and welcome to part 5 of The Hobbit. We are now in a new chapter, Riddles in the Dark. Although story-wise, we're not actually at that chapter yet, but... Thank the elves for this glowing blade. So the opening of this area is pitch black and you can't see where you're going, so you need to bring out the weapon Sting in order to illuminate the area and make everything all visible. I like that little touch. I like the fact that we have this weapon that glows whenever we're next to the goblins and orcs, right? So, hey, we're in a dark, spooky cavern. We can't see where we're going. Pull out Sting and boom! Now you can see exactly where you're going and I think that's a pretty neat mechanic for this video game. It helps light the area up. Why not, eh? Why not? I also just showed off that the lock-on can be used with the stones as well as the stick and sword. Because I've been showing, like, solo combat. Like, I would use lock-on to show how you can, like, block wolves and spiders and all kinds of stuff. But you can actually use the throwing stones with the lock-on as well. And that's actually a lot more useful than holding R, using the control stick to aim the reticle, and, you know, being clumsy and missing every shot. If you push the Y button, you can strafe, you can dodge the fireballs that the fire bats shoot at you, and you can hit them with relatively perfect accuracy. Relatively. You know. He's well I hope my sword can help them. Now don't worry, Bilbo. Sting is very, very sharp. It can cut the webs no problem. Although, keep in mind, if you cut a web, spiders are probably going to get agitated. Oh. Oh. I have to find another way around. You cut the webs and it's probably going to release a whole bunch of spiders on you. And there's two types here. There are the black spiders, which only do regular damage. But there's so many of them, and they can get a nice hit on you when you're not looking. So I like to jump around a lot, you know. But uh, they also have the green spider. The green spider has poison inside of it. So when it bites you, Bilbo gets poisoned and then his health starts to go down little by little. And you'll have to either tough it out and wait for the poison to wear off, or you can use an antidote if you bought one in the shop at the end of the stage. But uh, I don't know how many players would buy antidotes at this point since we haven't really run into any poisonous creatures yet. But yeah, those green spiders, they are there. Oh god, they are there and they're just... They're the worst. Ugh. I hope no one is afraid of spiders watching this video, because look at that big guy! <laughs> if you're afraid of spiders, I think this guy's probably giving you some nightmares tonight. I don't know. <laughs> Small spiders, big spiders. Hey, this isn't even the spider chapter. There's a level coming up with a whole bunch of spiders, so if you're afraid of spiders, I got bad news for you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, we are in Riddles in the Dark, although that chapter in the book doesn't really chronicle what we're doing right now. We're still technically in the Overhill and Underhill portion, uh, specifically the Underhill part because uh, we're going into the goblin caves to try and save Thorin, Feely, Keely, Balin, Dwalin, Oin, Gloin, Dory, Nori, Ori, Bifer, Bofer, Bomber, and Gandalf. Why don't we? I still remember their names. I will never forget their names. A dwarf! Hello, I'm Bilbo Baggins, at your service. I am Balfour of the Iron Hills. I am grateful for your service, but freeing me would take the service of a hundred dwarves, or a thousand elves, or one burglar. Hmm. Very well. Go down into the mines and find a large gate. Bribe Ugslap the guard and he'll open it. When you get through that gate, climb up to the jail. That's where they take me when I finish my work on the mining contraptions. Free me, and I will help you escape. Oh good, we got another dwarf to save. Jeez. 
So that's Doran, Feely, Keely, Balan, Dwalin, Oin, Gloin, Dory, Nori, Ori, Bifer, Bofer, Bomber, and Balfer. Ugh. What's that noise? Goblins! Too many dwarves, too many goblins. Ugh. The Hobbit does have fall damage, so don't think I can just jump down there and try and surprise attack them. Oh no. Bilbo will break his legs and that'll be it for him. So you do have to make sure you're going down the ladders. And sometimes the fall damage can be rather picky. You might think that, oh, I can make that just fine. And then Bilbo just breaks his ankle and that's it. Game over. Go back to checkpoint. And it's like, come on, you hobbit. <laughs> I know you're tiny, but come on. Come on, buddy. Must be the gate I need. For 2003 GameCube standards, I remember seeing this area for the first time and being like, oh my god, this is a really interesting level. Like, we're in the goblin caves, right? The goblin mines. And this is all area that we're going to be visiting at some point. Like, this place is huge, it's interconnected, we're gonna be scouring every edge of this map and checking all of it out. And it's such a visual set piece when you first enter here and you're looking at all the set pieces that we're going to be going to as we go through this level and I'm just like wow this is pretty neat for a GameCube game that I didn't know if this was a high budget low budget you know movie tie-in book tie-in game you know I didn't know what to expect going into the Hobbit and I saw this level and I was just like oh my god this is pretty epic in scope the goblin caves the goblin mines are freaking neat And I love that song. <laughs> Every time you kill the goblin, dun 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 da da da. I, I love that musical sting. That's so good. Oh, that's so good. But uh, again, lock on and throwing stones are your friend. Boom. So that makes the stones a lot more useful because you know manual aiming. It's for the dogs. It's for the bees. It's for the whatever is inferior to us humans who are smart. <laughs> I apologize if I offended dog owners. <laughs> Either way, you don't want to fall into the river here. I don't want to fight this goblin on that bridge because it's easy for him to knock me off. And if I fall, well, that's it for good old Bilbo here. So you gotta be careful. Now they do a lot of jump flippy stuff, these goblins. So every time you try to swing for them, you know, they'll flip over you. And you'll have to be super careful. You can still block their attacks if you're locked onto them and you hold down the control stick, because if you're holding down, build will block, whatever, but when you get surrounded by a whole bunch of goblins, it doesn't really matter. There's only so much area that Bilbo can block from, you know? Look at this, I just picked up ice rocks, so when I throw the stones at the goblins, they get stuck, and I can just whittle them down and kill them really nicely. Are there ice stones in Middle-earth? Is that something that J.R.R. Tolkien actually wrote in the books? I mean, there's wizards, there's Gandalf, there's Saruman the White, there's Radagast. You know, I'm sure the wizards have all kinds of crazy kooky spells, but uh, I'm not sure if ice stones actually exist in the books. I have been reading the Hobbit book, and I definitely confirmed that Bilbo cannot swim. That is something I absolutely read in the book. For certain, the video game is very accurate. <laughs> in that regard, Bilbo cannot swim. It is very accurate in that sense. Although the novel doesn't have him picking up any courage crystals, and he's not fighting off the goblin army single-handedly. Ugh. Come on, novelization. Be more accurate to the video game. God. <laughs> Seriously, th this stuff we're doing right now, all these goblins we're killing, yeah, this does not happen in the books. <laughs> It's a video game! What do you want him to do, you know? It's like every movie tie-in, book tie-in, TV tie-in game where, I don't know. I did a Let's Play on Home Alone, like one of the first Let's Plays I ever did next to Cool World and Beauty and the Beast. It's a Super Nintendo game, and uh, a whole bunch of burglars go into Kevin McAllister's house in that video game. Like, it's not just Harry and Marv. You're taking on a weird guy in a fedora. You're taking on... 
<laughs> this. How am I supposed to lower this bridge? Now those barrels might be useful. Bilbo, I don't need the hints. I don't need the hints, okay? <laughs> but, uh... There's a guy with a fedora who threw his hat at you in Home Alone, and there's a lot of crazy robbers that joined Harry and Marv in the Home Alone video game because, you know, it's a video game. You need enemies, you need to kill things, you need to have some kind of gameplay. Unless they wanted to make The Hobbit a complete stealth-only game, like it's Splinter Cell or something, so he's, like, constantly avoiding every single goblin he sees. But, uh... I think kids wouldn't, wouldn't find that very fun. Most kids would find that pretty boring and dull, and that's not what they want to do with Bilbo Baggins, you know? You don't want to stealth your whole way through. I say that, and this game does have a few stealth segments in this game. We saw the stuff with the trolls, but uh, when we get a special trinket at the end of this chapter, we're going to be going uh, very stealthy in a lot of situations. You will see that, you will see that. But either way, Bilbo gave us the hint, so I'll throw a rock at this TNT, a ba-boom. Why in video games does everything have TNT? All these TNT barrels just lying around. It doesn't matter where they are. It could be in a bank, there'll be TNT barrels. <laughs> anyway, that rock I just zoomed in on, that's gonna be gone in a bit. This level's very weird. It has you backtracking to areas you've already been to before, but they'll like change things about the design to make new pathways appear. Like, oh look, a chain just showed up, even though the chain wasn't there before. Oh look, this rock just got out of the way, so now you can go down this pathway that you couldn't before. And there's really no... There's, the only thing that triggers it is like you get to certain points where there's like a cutscene plays, and then the level design will change a little bit. But the good thing about this level is that it's not backtracky in the way that like other bad games can be where like you have to walk like a miles back the way you came and it's like I've done this already I don't want to do this again you know uh, they have nice shortcuts and little pathways that take you back to areas you've been but it never feels like you're backtracking it just feels like you're continuing on with a giant level which I always appreciate you know I like the level design in The Hobbit it's very thoughtful very thoughtful I will, although I will say this this particular level the goblin caves goblin mines level is gigantic. This is a huge level. I had to cut this level into two videos because it went over the 40-50 minute mark. And, uh, yeah, I'm not gonna do commentary for 40-50 minutes straight. <laughs> so I had to split this level into two videos. I apologize, but, uh... Riddles in the Dark is a big, big level. And only the last five... five percent is, like, the actual Riddles in the Dark chapter. <laughs> But whatevs, whatevs. If you want to slide down the ladder, you have to hold B. You can hold down on the control stick, uh, but it's more quick with the B button than it is just holding down. Plus, I don't know. Sometimes when the camera changes, I don't want my movement to be all screwy, and then I just go places I don't want to go, you know? I'm very paranoid that I'll just slide off the ladder and go falling to my death. I'm very paranoid. Oh my god, my health! <laughs> This is what I'm talking about, where if you're surrounded by guys, it's very easy to get killed. They'll just hit you, hit you, hit you, and then your health goes down so quickly. So that's the first time I had to use a healing potion, because man, these guys are rough. Locking onto them and fighting them with that very slow lock-on method would be kind of a drag. I still like to use the jump and slash at everything in sight method. Plus, there's mushrooms everywhere to refill your health anyway. So if you should survive and not get dealt a lot of damage like I was, you'll be able to heal yourself. Extra heart container! Booyah! Who threw that? Who threw that bomb at me? Show yourself, you son of a bi Wait, who was that? Where? Who threw it at me? Ah, fuck it. I'll just open the chest. <laughs> oh, now I got poisoned! Ah! <laughs> It is not a good day for Bilbo Baggins. He left the Shire, and you'd think he would be enjoying this new adventure, learning to embrace the fact that he's not cooped up in his house, but uh, no, he got poisoned, he has bombs being thrown at him. It, this is rough. I'd rather go back to the Shire. This is not fun at all. This is, this is miserable. Miserable. Oh my god, my health. 
That poison is rough, man. That poison is rough. <coughs> C could you open this gate for me, sir? Please? What are you? A little rabbit got away from the cooks? Well, little rat, if you want this gate open, you bring me the wart stone from Crugbit. Fix the broken dwarf lift and you can steal the wart stone from Crugbit. Will do, Ugg Slap. I'll get that wart stone from Krugbit. I really like these names. <laughs> but I had to talk to him because that triggers a whole bunch of pathways opening up. And the good thing about the design as well is that they show you with Courage Crystals where you're supposed to be going. Like, even if you've been in this area before, they will make new Crystal Courage points and, like, show you a new pathway that you should be going. Like, you're always guiding you where your direction is. I need to fix this lift to get the wartstone. Looks like it's missing a lever. Apologies if you hear a phone in the distance, because my phone's ringing. I can't really do anything about that. I got a commentary to do. <laughs> I'll answer it later. But, um... Yeah, I, I like the fact that the crystals, the courage points, are constantly, like, popping up and showing you where you need to go. So I was never lost or confused playing The Hobbit. I think it's a pretty decent platforming game where it's always showing you what you should be doing, where you should be going, and aside from like the actual puzzles, because you know every now and then you'll have to solve a situation with your wits, uh, they don't really... and there's the rock being gone. Why is it gone? I don't know, but I'm back here and now I can go down this middle pathway when I could not before. I got myself a mug key. These names are so kooky. Goblins are bizarre, bizarre creatures. I can ride that lift now. And something's throwing fire at me, and that makes me nervous. Ah. <laughs> I apologize for the wait on this video. Um, after Final Fantasy IV, I wanted to have a little bit of break so people could enjoy that. And then April 4th happened, and that's when Persona 5 came out. And yeah, anyone who's been following me on Twitter knows that like I've been kind of waiting for Persona 5 a long, long, long time. So when Persona 5 came out, I, I dedicated a lot of my time to beating that. And I did beat it. It's fantastic. It's a great game. You should get it for your PlayStation 3 or your PlayStation 4, whatever system you may have. And uh, Makoto Nijima is best girl. Just saying, Makoto Najima, best girl. Um, <laughs> but uh, I'm done with Persona 5, and I'm still recording Final Fantasy 5, but that will definitely... I hope the goblins don't mind me starting all their contraptions. <laughs> oh, Bilbo, you're so cheeky. But uh, I, I will definitely have some Hobbit videos coming out every single weekday. And after Final Fantasy V comes out, I'm not going to wait a week for it to sit. I'm going to just keep uploading Hobbit videos after five has come out because i feel like this like this let's play it's been dragon i think we started this back in march and it's almost may so gotta be better about that gotta be better about that i do want to play another game after the hobbit that is considered a bad one but it is in my wheelhouse it's a, in the same wheelhouse of let's plays that i've done before so um that may give you a nice special hint as to what's next after The Hobbit. But yeah! Hey goblins, what's up? I would always recommend doing the ground pound because again, the bottom left is this blue meter and when it's all filled up, if you jump and push the attack button, Bilbo does a ground pound. And no matter what, even if they have a shield in front of them, the ground pound will always rock them. It will always rock them and knock them down and then that lets you deal out some extra hits on them while they're rolling around on the ground. And uh, it's always recommended for that. Like, sometimes it'd be wise to, like, lock onto an enemy, hold back on the control stick so that you're in block formation so that they can't really hurt you, and then wait for the blue meter to fill up, because it always refills, and then do your ground pound and get back into them to attack them some more if you're a very cautious, defensive player, you know? If you want to really be careful and not lose too much health, because let's say you don't have any healing potions or whatever. Me, you can check in the top right, I have a lot of healing potions, so I should be pretty damn good. But, uh, 
Doesn't take much to kill you, and the Hobbit doesn't take much to kill you at all, so I gotta be extra, extra careful. Sometimes the goblins want me to come to them, and I'm just like, fine, whatever. Whatever, goblins, I'll come to you. <laughs> I'll do this silly voice, I don't know. I got nervous, I had to refill my health. Not taking any chances. I haven't saved yet. If I die, I have to go all the way back to the dark area where those flying bats were and the spider webs and stuff. I haven't saved. So, uh, yeah, very, very nervous. Time to take a ride. But yeah, folks, that's where I'm going to cut. This level is gigantic, so we're going to see the second half of this level in part six. See you then.